Welcome to FedScoop TV. I'm Billy Mitchell. Today I'm here with David Bailey, the Sales Director of the U.S. Public Sector for Mission Critical Systems at HPE. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Um, it's great to have you here today at the Digital Nation Summit, uh, sponsored by SEP. And uh, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about your perspective on the progress of digital within the federal government. Um, so let's just jump right into it right sure. there. Um, how would you measure that progress of late? Um, is it a success story, or where would you put it kind of on, on the scale in terms of their success? I would, well, I would say it's generally building. Right, mm -hmm. so it's one of those things that's in, you know, the way we view our customers right now at H Hewlett Packard Enterprise is that they're all on a journey. They're, they're juggling multiple, multiple different solution sets from cloud to private cloud, to traditional infrastructure and all the complexities in between. Mm -hmm. So that transformation is really more of a journey than a destination. Yeah. And I see all of our customers at different inflection points along that journey. Some have done th some things that are very advanced while others are still struggling to try to, you know, corral some of the old legacy stuff and maybe do um, incremental improvement. So yeah. it kind of depends on which agency we're, we're, we're referring to. And, and all of them are, are making progress. They're just at different points on that journey. Yeah, that makes sense. In uh, kind of maybe speaking anecdotally, you're talking about some uh, <clears throat> an example or two. Um, is, is there one you could offer in terms of what that success might look like within the federal government? Do you mind if I give two? Sure, go Alrighty. for it. So there's, uh, I cover both state and local and I cover federal government. And, and I think one that, that always rises to the top of my mind is, is one that SAP also talks quite a bit about. It's been the state of Indiana and the infant yeah. mortality and opiate abuse thing. And the reason why it, that always sticks in my mind is because normally in the, back in the day, I think people used to think of those as more social services problems, not really an IT problem at all yeah. or a digitization problem. But when you look at really fundamentally what that did was uh, they solved some very complex social issues, but by first getting their hands on the data and what the data was telling them, yeah. and then being bold enough to use that data in a new and creative way to solve a very pressing problem that you normally don't associate with IT. Yeah. So I think that's a very kind of poignant success story, and it's an example of a very advanced, what I consider to be a very advanced success story, mm -hmm. and a very limited nature in that particular state. I know they yeah. have other challenges that they're, do they're dealing with, and I've seen a few other things like that in the states. Um, but another one that, that kind of jumps to mind has been, and it's because of this week I just was uh, at another conference up the street, is, uh, has been some of the, the SAP and ERP transformations that the U.S. Army is doing and, and wrestling with getting out of, you know, five different, um, uniquely different implementations and trying to make those more uniform, number one, two, modernize them, and three, begin to build this kind of outsourcing model with, with this uh, Defensive Information Systems Agency and balance what their on-premise needs are within Army data centers they control. And I would consider them to be, you know, kind of smack dab in the middle of that journey of where they're really evaluating, you know, which pieces they need to uh, leverage where and what kind of context, as well as introducing new technologies such as linking to existing legacy data systems and having more of a big data analytics problem of trying to view their existing ERP data, their historical data, mm -hmm. Um, and their data warehouse data from, from previous legacy systems all in the same context. And that they're currently underway with doing that now. And I consider that to be a monumental task, but I really uh, applaud what they're trying to do uh, from what I've seen in the efforts so far have been very successful. Sure. Um, you mentioned new technologies, uh, and I kind of wanted to go down that path next um, in terms mm -hmm. of what are the emerging technologies that are really helping agencies kind of better serve their mission today? Um, the, the, well, both of those were indicative of, of one particular one, uh, which is the idea of big memory ma analytics, mm -hmm. using things like, uh, you know, the HANA database, for instance, to perform that, that big memory model where you stuff more stuff into memory and then you look at it uh, in the fastest way possible and draw yeah. those correlations. That's probably the biggest thing that I've seen um, in terms of the, the transfer, transformation around data and the way they look at data. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And then finally, you know, that this is a work in progress for uh, agencies at all levels, um, but what would you say are the challenges that are going to, you know, maybe impede that progress um, as we continue to move forward? Yeah, so the biggest challenge I've seen, and, uh, and I've had several conversations with, uh, and I get fascinated by the idea because I also come from, I was in the Army 23 years, and I come from that space mm -hmm. in the Pentagon. And one of the biggest challenges I've seen having served on both sides of the equation has been culture. Yeah. Culture to me has been the biggest impediment. It's not a technology issue, and it's not really an equipment issue, and it's not a software issue. It really comes to um, 
keeping pace with the rate of change we're seeing in the marketplace. You know, you got great examples with companies like Uber that disrupted the entire taxicab market and other companies that have emerged very rapidly and introduced new capabilities. And what, what I'm finding is that the stakeholders, both in the public sector and private sector, are very impatient to get those. And your, your ability to be able to enact that kind of change rapidly mm -hmm. is the biggest hurdle, and that's largely driven by the culture that you're able to inculcate into your organization. Sure, sure. Well, David, that's uh, all I have for you today, um, but I appreciate you stopping by to talk, talk yeah, to me. Yeah, no problem. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm Billy Mitchell with FedScoop TV. Thanks for watching.